Okay, everybody, welcome to our event today. We're so happy to have you here. We're going to learn about how to get media attention and the web's most powerful backlinks in the correct way to your website this holiday season. We have three speakers here today. We have Lauren, Madison, and Morgan. Lauren, would you like to say hello? Hi, yeah. Um, I'm a senior digital PR manager at Ignite, and I've been in the digital marketing space for about five years. Awesome. Thanks, Lauren. Madison? I'm the digital PR strategist here at Ignite, and I've also been in PR um, for the last five years as well. And Morgan? Hi, everybody. My name is Morgan. I'm the director of digital PR here at Ignite. Um, I have about 10 years experience in digital PR, and I've been with Ignite for about eight years now. We've got some really exciting stuff today, everybody. You're going to be learning about how to get the web's most powerful backlinks in the correct way. But first, before we get into all of these amazing tactics and strategies, and, and we actually show you at the end of this presentation, real examples of assets online that have gotten hundreds and hundreds of links and kind of talk through, you know, how, how you do that. First, you know, why are we here today? What are we going to be covering? Talk us through a little bit about uh, some, some of that, Morgan. So we are here to kind of help you create a digital PR strategy for the holiday season. So if you have a product that you're really struggling to market this holiday season, or you're struggling to stand out um, against your competitors, we've developed these three really strong strategies that will help you get tons of links and tons of traffic for the holiday season. So talk to us a little bit more about what we're going to be covering. Yeah, so we're going to be covering three different strategies to really maximize your product awareness specifically. Um, we're going to be breaking down the difficulty, the time investment, and what that return on investment is going to look like for each of these three different strategies. And then at the end, we're going to take a look at some top linkable assets that you can replicate in 2023. And we're going to be talking about ROI from a perspective of actual sales to your website. But in addition to that, domain authority, SEO rankings, referring site traffic. So we'll be getting into all that. So talk to us about what digital PR does for you. Yeah, so digital PR places your brand and content on websites in front of your potential customers. Um, it gives you the opportunity to increase sales through product placements, through buyer testimony, really gives you a sea of possibilities for um, cutting through the noise and um, reaching the customer in the like top of funnel in their journey. Digital PR makes sure that you show up in the places online where your customers are looking for your product or service. Okay, so step one is the power of product reviews. Lauren, talk to us about product reviews a little bit. So product reviews are typically when journalists do a roundup or a best of comparison where they're reviewing um, and comparing several products in your niche. Um, they typically talk about pros and cons as well as price comparisons and other notable details. And this is effective for people that are in their shopping journey looking to make a decision on where they're going to, you know, make their product purchase. Um, and so they typically go to reviews to kind of inform them on what product might be best for them. It can help drive sales by driving traffic straight from a review to a purchase page. And it's also a great way for smaller brands to kind of break into those publications that are talking about bigger brands. Something also worth noting is that Google tends to rank listicles really high in the SERP. So like Lauren said, if you are just getting starting out and it's really kind of hard to rank for some of those top money keywords, getting into these listicles is a great strategy to really like try to, to capitalize on those keywords as well. Okay. So everybody wants to be on these top lists so that they can be visible when their consumers are searching, they can get more referring site traffic. Talk to us a little bit about some of these examples. So we chose these examples um, to show you what a lot of these roundups will look like. So we have the best running shoes for women, best at home teeth whitening products and best light therapy masks of 2022. Something cool to note about these roundups is that they're typically updated yearly. So you can reach out to the specific writer of last year's roundup to see if you would be able to be included in you know next year's. So for example, with the best light therapy masks of 2022, we're quickly approaching 2023. It would be smart to reach out to that that writer if you're in that niche for inclusion. So how do you find the right opportunities? First, we're going to brainstorm product categories, and you want to think about what audience segments you want to target. If you were Adidas, for example, and you wanted to find articles that you weren't already included in for best running shoes, you could use the search operator best running shoes minus Adidas to find articles that you hadn't already been included in. Another good strategy is to review your competitors' backlink profiles to see if you can find where they've been placed in product reviews or roundups. 
So we want to Google our top keywords and best and find all of those lists. We also want to find all the different places our competitors are listed. We want to make sure that we get listed for the, the brands that we're representing on all of those same lists as well. That's a great exercise for anybody to be doing. How often would you do this exercise, Lauren? So you can do this outside of the holiday season as well. You could probably do it quarterly to try and find where competitors are uh, receiving their coverage from. So what are some best practices for roundup opportunities? Awesome. So this is a really neat hack. Um, this is going back to buyer persona and target audience. So for example, again, with the running shoes, you can get really granular with different audiences. So for example, the wide feet uh, for women, for men. Um, I know one of these articles also mentions the best shoe for long distance running. So more targeted you can get with audience, uh, typically the better you can find placements. So this is also great for businesses outside of just e-commerce and product businesses. Um, this works for B2B companies. This works for a service-based business. You can really replicate this across many different industries. So regardless of the industry that you're in, whether it's e-commerce or lead gen or business services, you want to be listed on all the top review sites and all the top lists that are in your niche. So what are some actionable steps? Yeah. So now that you've built out um, a list of sites you want to outreach, you want to craft your pitch. Typically, journalists and writers get a lot of pitches, so it means that it's really important that your pitch stands out. A couple of tips that I have for you is that you want to make sure that you personalize your pitch. So, for example, that first green box, going back to the running shoes article, I wrote that I was checking out their guide on best running shoes for women and found it very informative. The long distance shoe pick in your article is spot on, and that informs them that I read their article. This isn't a mass pitch being sent out to multiple writers. And then another important thing in the second green box that I included was data to support how this benefits them. So according to data from the NPD Group Inc. in 2021, women's performance footwear sales were growing at a faster rate than men's, which means women no longer want generic running shoes that in the past were designed for men's feet. And then that last tagline, our last shoe launch is designed for women, meaning they're slimmer in the heel and molded specifically to fit women's feet, shows that our product stands out and why we are providing value. So we want to make sure that we're complying with Google regulations. And so if we happen to be mentioned organically, that's awesome. However, if we're sending out a product or paying a fee for a placement, we want to make sure that our backlink is tagged appropriately and that the review is marked as sponsored. So even if we have to pay for the placement, that's totally okay as long as it's clearly marked as sponsored. It can result in great referring site traffic and exposure for any product or service. Okay, so Madison, talk to us a little bit about using influencers and affiliates. Yeah, of course. If you have an affiliate program, um, leveraging influencers is a great way to promote some things that you guys are working on during the holidays. Ways to partner with influencers is obviously you want to find influencers that cater to your industry. So a great example would be going to Instagram. And if you sell home products or home goods, looking for interior designers and people that specialize in home decor and reaching out to them. Another call out that's really important as well is if you're just getting started in the industry, um, great influencers to go after would be nano and micro influencers. And what those are really influencers that fall between the 1000 to 20,000 follower ratio. And what that really means is that you're looking for influencers that have higher engagement rates and really tied to their um, loyalty with their followers. And so a great way to kind of uh, partner with influencers, especially during the holidays, is offer an exclusive pricing discount. So what that does is it creates a feeling of exclusivity with the followers. And then obviously you can have direct sales correlated with that. And then another opportunity would be influencers curating gift guides. We already see this happening in the space right now. There's a lot of gift guides being released, and it's a great opportunity to be included in guides with like-minded products that the influencers are already working on. And then something that's also really popular during the holidays is unboxing videos. According to YouTube, videos featuring amateur unboxing videos, anything from running shoes to dog toys have been viewed 1.1 billion times. Um, so there's definitely a lot of opportunity there. There's more reviews on your products increase engagement on mobile platforms with people shopping more on their social media and then obviously direct sales. So find the top 100 influencers in your space, work with 10 of them a month to have a specific promo, give them an affiliate code so that they have some skin in the game as well or an affiliate link. So they're able to you know, make some money if, if things go well. And when you consistently do this over time, it can turn into a very profitable part of the program overall. 
Step two, sales, promotions, and gift guides. Madison, talk to us a little bit about sales, promotions, and gift guides. So sales, promotions, uh, and gift guides are a great opportunity, um, especially with the holidays approaching. Just some you know, important statistics to call out is that last year, 108 million people reported that they plan to shop on Black Friday. And then with this year's trends, we've got a little over $100.5 trillion in holiday sales. So there's definitely a lot of demand right now is the time to really get started on your promotions. Just some call outs is that um, shopping intent um, related keywords is going to be trending upwards during this time, as you can see to the right on this graph here. Additionally, there's an increase in searches for seasonal keywords. So throughout the year, you may see a little bit sprinkled through, but we're going to see a higher volume of keywords like best Christmas gifts for dads, best Black Friday sales in 2022. So those are going to be opportunities where you're going to want to look for those type of keywords. And then what you can do to jumpstart your holiday promotions, we talked about this previously, is reverse engineer what your top competitors are doing. Just like how you kind of did with the listicles, you're going to do the same thing with the sales guides as you're going to really look for those opportunities where your competitors are and you guys um, could potentially get on. And then um, identify top industry publications. So going back to my example of like home products and home goods, as you can look for publications like Good Housekeeping, where they feature their top sales listicles as well. Another great opportunity is press releases. This is great if you're releasing more than one product sale. So if you're doing a site-wide deal, great opportunity to let the media know when your sale is, if it's early, like what are the value propositions of that sale, and then also creating your own product shopping guides. So this is a great opportunity for people that have more than one type of sale. And then going back to some of our Google updates, Google tends to rank listicles highly. So if you have your own gift guide or sale guide on your site, this could be beneficial as well for on-site traffic. Yeah, I just think it's important to note that we're seeing the trend. Companies are getting started earlier and earlier with their holiday promotions. Um, So it's important to really start planning your strategy now um, in advance of the holidays. You know, you can see, you know, these huge spikes and searches around gifts on the right hand side of the screen. So that's why it's so important to line up a promotion three, four months ahead of time and then scale your ads uh, throughout that entire period so that you can really maximize your sales during that period. So how do we find holiday gift guide opportunities? You could use search operators to find sales verticals like you did with the listicle roundup guide. So what you're going to do is look for your product or relevant gift guide theme. Uh, An example that we did over here was we took um, Black Friday deals on mattresses in 2022, and it populated some of the top guides. Um, And what you're going to do is want to reach out to these sites, um, writers and editors, and see if they are willing to um, include some of your deals as well. And then just a tip is that you want to start earlier than later. As Lauren mentioned earlier, we're seeing these guides come out earlier and earlier, even as early as September for some of the Black Friday shopping guides. So the sooner you get started on reaching out to these publications, um, the more likely you're going to get included. And then, you know, you're going to see that return on investment once these guides get released. So when we do this for clients and we get them listed on all of the top lists in their industry, we see higher referring site traffic, higher sales, and definitely more consumers coming in during the most important time of the year, but also something you can do at any point in time during the year. Now we're talking about leveraging HARO for gift guide opportunities. Talk to us about that. Yeah. So just a quick um, tutorial. HARO is help a reporter out. So what it does is it's a platform that connects journalists and bloggers with relevant experts. And what we see with holiday gift guide trends is we see a lot of publications and editors releasing queries for gift guides. And so this is a great opportunity to pitch your products to to these journalists and get included. And it's a very high value for, you know, the little amount of time that you spend here. And just something to reiterate is you want to make sure that what you're pitching um, has value as well as you're including all your product details. If there's a discount, that'd be worth including in your pitch as well. And then just make sure um, that you're adhering to the guidelines that they have on the platform as well. What are some best practices for HARO? So like I said, we want to meet the qualification requirements, not only of the platform, but of the journalists. So just be as thorough as possible when you're reading each query. Make sure the product that you're pitching is relevant to their business or what they're asking. And then make sure that you're providing that value and that insight. Back from Lauren's example earlier, she showed how she tied value to the product that she was pitching. And you could do the same thing with HARO's. 
And those higher points will definitely help you with um, getting included into some of these guides as well. And one of my favorite Haro hacks is to say, I have the perfect quote for you and then give the exact quote for the journalist in the response. That gets a great pickup. So now we're talking about more best practices for Haro opportunities. Yeah. So this is an example that we took from a client where we pitched um, some of their sleep related products and what we saw was really beneficial. And so some of the call outs that I did was I added in a relevant resource um, and an article that tied the trend of weighted blankets to the weighted blanket that we were pitching. And then obviously um, as much content on the weighted blanket as possible, providing value and then making sure that if they need additional product details, asking for that as well. A call out for this one is um, the time investment on Haro. So this one pitch that probably took about maybe 10 to 15 minutes to write, it resulted in um, about 15 placements from this one pitch. So um, Consumer Queen picked it up and then it was um, also syndicated across 14 other websites. So great return on time there. These, this goes back to the fact that gift guides are done yearly. Um, typically, you can look if they're if they don't list themselves as, as anonymous and they share their name and the outlet that it's with. You can go back to the site and look at previous gift guides to make sure that your product um, would be a good fit for a listicle, um, and even look at, at the information that they had previously shared about products to make sure that you're including the necessary information. So now we're looking at 30 day results from Haro. Talk us through this. Yeah. So similar to what we were doing with the holiday gift guide pitching for that sleep space related client, um, we also pitched other holiday gift guide and sales products during that time. And we received 20 placements over a span of 30 days with a little under 20,000 estimated views and even some offsite social engagements with those gift guides. So just showing you that the visibility of these gift guides not only benefits you for sales, but also helps people get engaged with your social platforms and directs traffic from not only, you know, these gift guides, but also directing traffic from social as well. 20 pieces of coverage, 18,000 estimated views, 130,000 audience size, and 309 engagements off of one well-crafted pitch. Amazing results. Okay, so now we're shifting gears a little bit and talking about cause marketing. Morgan, talk to us a little bit about why giving back is not only good uh, for the business and not only good for you know public perception, but can also lead to press in some ways. So a cause marketing campaign, it's not only a opportunity to drive sales, but also tell a really authentic story about your brand and what your brand's philanthropic endeavors are. It really increases brand loyalty and engagement. And we're seeing a rise in um, millennials and Gen Z really demanding that companies um, you know, take part in their community. They have um, that goodwill intent that's authentic and they're purpose driven. And we are a mission-driven organization here at Ignite Visibility. It's not just all about sending the perfect email or getting, you know, the best press. The harder we work, the more we get to give back to employee success, client success, and the community. So this is something that uh, is near and dear uh, to our hearts and definitely motivates me every day as well. Morgan, talk to us more about why giving back matters. So as I mentioned, um, we're seeing that rise in consumers really demanding that companies give back to their communities. Um, and it's a really strong, uh, powerful PR strategy because essentially you're bringing, um, you know, traditional PR and digital PR strategies with a powerful SEO link strategy um, together as one. So you can create a buzz around your brand through community involvement. And it's really one of the best ways to break through the noise is to leverage a good cause. Um, so some different cause marketing ideas are um, maybe donating a portion of your sales to a nonprofit or a cause, um, sponsoring a nonprofit event. Um, you could do like a buy one, give one, you know, similar to we've seen that with Tom's and a couple of other brands there. Um, and it really has a ton of value. So a lot of the press coverage that comes from these cause marketing campaigns are going to be really high authority. So you're seeing links from like .org, new sites, really highly authoritative, high ranking websites um, that generally have significantly more value. You're also going to appear more trusted to your um, to your consumers, uh, and it creates a better brand loyalty. So customers are willing to come back to you knowing that they are supporting a company that is giving back to the community. You can also target hyper-local markets and really get some local press coverage. People appreciate companies that give back and, you know, you know, obviously it's something that, you know, people really want to see in companies and it can benefit the companies as well. Talk to us a little bit more about driving results and, and getting results um, when you're giving back at the same time. As we enter the holiday season, you know, that's all about a time of giving, but this can happen year round. So this doesn't have to be just a specifically holiday related strategy. This can be something that is done 
um, throughout the year. One of the biggest points that you'll want to remember is authenticity matters. So if you're not authentic um, and genuine, this is not a strategy that is going to work. That's really the biggest aspect of this strategy, and it's going to really drive success there. So this strategy demands being highly authentic in every part of the strategy. So the way you communicate it, the way that you set up the strategy, the donations, and your initiatives. The next thing that you'll need to do is build out that landing page. So where are you going to direct the traffic and the press coverage and build those backlinks to and tell your story on that page? From there, you want to release a press release, and that is where the magic happens. So that is where the journalists read your story. Um, you can pitch journalists who cover the specific industry that you're going after, um, who cover those types of charitable events, and that's what's going to drive um, that press coverage there. Charitable giving affects nearly three quarters of American spending decisions, which just goes back to my point I mentioned earlier. Um, and then half of consumers surveyed said that they would switch to a company that supports a cause that they believe in. A hundred percent, you know, linking to your partner, they're linking back to you, you're supporting each other, you're in it together, and it helps everybody rank better in Google, but also build a better company overall, and that makes everybody feel good. So what are some actionable tips for business owners, Morgan? Yeah, so the best way to start this is first by picking a charitable cause um, that really represents your business and your organization that you want to partner with. Um, that could be like a fundraising event, a donation drive, sponsoring a single event. It could be as easy as that. Um, and then, like I mentioned, you want to build out that landing page where you're going to be building those backlinks and coverage to um, where you're communicating that initiative that you'll be doing. For us, it's reality changers, which we help underprivileged kids get into college who would never otherwise have this opportunity. And Padres Pedal the Cause, which is a bike race fundraiser that helps raise money for people who have cancer. And both of these organizations really make us feel good about supporting them, supporting their mission, and it all comes back around. And then the next step is getting the press. So that is where you'll want to release that press release, um, get that syndicated across PR web, and then get journalists to pick, pick it up. And so how you get journalists to pick it up is you build a, a journalist media list. So you'll want to contact and pitch journalists who are writing stories on the top news outlets in your area. You can go after local markets and uh, get those picked up and get some press coverage there. And like I mentioned, those links are going to be those highly valuable links that are directing back to your landing page. Talk to us about donation gifting. Yeah, so this is just an example of one of the businesses that I came across that has done this in the past. So in this example, we see H&M, I think it was in 2020, teamed up with a partner called Gives. Um, and what they did was they offered a $10 charity donation for every $60 spent. Um, and so it was a really great incentive for customers to complete full price purchases. Um, and in return, H&M would donate a $10 to a charity of their choice. Um, and they saw some really great results. So what was interesting was they had an 85% cost savings versus a traditional sales discount. And so it really was beneficial for them to do a charity donation, which one, not only benefited the charity and increased brand loyalty because they're able to, customers are able to support whichever charity they want. Um, it was less expensive than running a holiday promo or a discount. They also saw a 30% uh, increase in open rates on their emails announcing the donation incentive, and then seven times increase in customer engagement while they were running this campaign. People want to support cause-driven organizations. It all comes back around, and we see that when this aligns with marketing, they get great results. Talk to us about Brooke Linen. Yeah, this is another example of a company that is doing, this is actually a year-round uh, promotion that they run. So what what they have set up is for every returned product across all of their distribution centers, they donate them to donation centers across the country. So they donate all of their returned product to donation centers across the country, which is really awesome. In addition to that, supporting um, those donation centers with blankets and sheets and towels, they also donate to the Humane Societies and they've partnered with Animal Haven uh, to provide sheets for animal shelters. With this client, we ran a food donation drive over the course of November in 2020 and 2021. It's actually a yearly event that they run. So every November, they partner with local food banks and they offer a 20% discount for their customers who donate two cans of food to any of their um, brick and mortar locations. And we got a ton of press around this. As you can see, in just one month, we garnered 2.1 million views across their press coverage. It generated almost 80 pieces of coverage. Uh, it had a ton of social media engagement, so 630 social shares. And then you can see some of the max domain authorities of the links that we secured were up in the 80s, which is amazing. Uh, we saw tons of 
press coverage, a huge increase in referral traffic, and um, also customers that so we saw a huge increase in customers who are wanting that 20% discount. That's awesome. 79 pieces of coverage, 27.8 million online readership. You know, when you do something good and you promote it and it helps the organization that you're promoting as well as yourself and it all comes back around, it's really, really amazing to see great work on this campaign. So now we're talking about the online assets that get the most links. We've got four different examples here. The first one, 580 natural links. The second one, 121 natural links. The third one, 123 natural links. And finally, 277. And the first one is just a quick study that we did using some of our own data, finding the click-through rate in Google by ranking position. This took 15, 20 minutes to gather this data. We wrote a blog. We pushed it out there, and then we promoted it, 580 natural links came into this online asset. And example number two, you can see we did an industry study. We do industry studies here for clients all the time, by the way. We try to recommend doing at least one a quarter. They're pretty easy to put together. We can survey thousands and thousands of people. So an example two, this SEO and intent study that we did in 2020, what is the intent of the SEO queries uh, was, was the study, got 121 natural links. And example three, we see we actually created a movie. So we interviewed six or seven different people who were social media experts, tied it all together into a documentary, and we promoted it over a year and were able to get 123 natural links and from some really amazing online publications, such as huge movie websites like IMDb. In example number four, you can see another film that we created called SEO the Movie, which got 277 natural links. Outside of this, we're also seeing that white papers, quizzes, infographics, breaking news are some other great examples of things that bring in natural links, as well as tools. Lauren, what are some of your biggest takeaways for 2023 digital PR? What's going to help people win? Well, so we recently had that helpful uh, content update from Google, and I'm really excited about that because that means that we're shifting our focus to creating content that's very user focused, which in reality for digital PR means that it'll drive backlinks organically. Good content is king when it comes to digital PR. So creating that really informative user focused content is going to be beneficial for digital PR professionals. I'm really excited about um, data led content. So as you mentioned, industry studies, uh, we're seeing a huge rise in the links that we're getting back from studies that we're running. So publishing unique data and getting that really data led content, it's going to be very highly linkable and a great piece of content that's going to drive a good strategy. I love that. People want to see data, real, you know, novel data around specific industries online. We see that from our industry studies and we see that when we put together any data and then release that ourselves. Great comment. Madison, over to you. Yeah. Um, trying to scale PR for, for sales initiatives. I think we focus on things like content, um, which really matters. And I think there's opportunities really to promote either your sales, um, promote your content, but really scale your PR initiatives for increased sales and try to garner that top of funnel traffic to eventually, eventually convert them and you know, have them become a regular customer. Um, and like I said, you could do this with e-commerce, but you can also do this with B2B and other uh, types of industries. And so I think the more in innovative that you can get um, with, with trying to scale for sales, um, you know, the, the better your results are going to be. Madison, Lauren Morgan, thank you so much for being on today. It was great to have you. Thank you so much for attending our digital PR webinar today on how to get the most powerful backlinks online as we go into 2023 and do it in a responsible way through real press. A couple final takeaways for you. One, industry studies, so incredibly powerful, real data, using it to get backlinks and cut through the clutter of everything else that's going online. Two, getting listed on all of the top lists in your industry where your consumers are actually looking for your product or service is critical. Three, being a mission-driven organization for the right reasons, but also aligning that with your promotional strategies so that you can promote the charitable organization that you're a part of. And as we said in the presentation, it all comes back around. Four, creating one really great pitch and then pushing that out there and getting massive coverage. 
we showed earlier 79 pieces of coverage, 27.8 million in online readership views, 633 social shares, and getting links from domain authority sites between 41 and 83, all just for doing something good and promoting it online through press releases and outreach. Good luck with your digital PR strategy in 2023. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out. Send us an email at any time at sales at ignitevisibility.com. And please feel free to give us a like or a comment. We always appreciate the support for doing these videos. Have a great day. Goodbye.